This is Car Guys New England, and uh, today's video is going to be about lowrider hydraulics. How do they work? So let's uh, let's get into this. So traditional lowriders uh, used to use uh, hydraulics as the primary means of lifting and lowering the car. Uh, hydraulics work on a principle that fluids cannot be compressed. Uh, so therefore, um, if you have fluid and you are pumping it somewhere, it, it's going to basically move a cylinder or uh, perform some sort of you know, action depending on what it's hooked to. Uh, so here we have, and I'm just going to zoom in on one of these. Um, this here is a, a hydraulic pump, and forgive me, it's it's dirty. I need to clean this up. So this is a reservoir. This is where the oil goes. Uh, this is the hydraulic block that the actual pump head that's inside the tank is mated to. Um, and this block uh, has a pressure outlet and a return uh, for the oil to come back. Uh, it's driven by a hydraulic motor. Um, and these are typically 12 volt motors, um, but uh, in low riders, and we'll get into this in a second, that um, is, is something that we like to play around with. Um, moving on. So pretty much what ends up happening is when you activate the switch, the fluid comes out, the pressure goes through a check valve, which actually will keep the fluid from coming back. And it's going to go out, go to a line to a particular cylinder or however you have it set up. Uh, this right here is an ADEX uh, dump valve. And what happens here is if this is electronically activated through the solenoid, it diverts the fluid back through this hard line into the slowdown valve, which will control how quickly the car drops when you activate this valve. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. So lowriders typically will end up having two to four pumps. Some cars have three. Uh, so there's many different plumbing configurations and many different wiring configurations. Um, four pump setups tend to be um, a little tricky to get all the pumps to act the same uh, when you're lifting and lowering the car. Um, and then as far as batteries... So in lowriders, what a lot of people are doing, you'll notice these batteries are hooked up in series. And what happens is that at every single terminal that crosses over, it's going to bump up by 12 volts. So it would be 12 volts, you know, on the first first knob or the first uh, positive terminal. Then it would be 24, 36, and then 48 volts at this one. Uh, the reason for this is, since it's a 12-volt motor, that actually speeds up the action of the hydraulics. Uh, the problem with this is the motors do get hot and they do wear out as a result of that. Uh, the other thing, too, the, the main battery power is actually hooked to solenoids. And these are just normal Ford starter solenoids. And what ends up happening is... Uh, you don't want to be running 48 volts, obviously, through your switches. So on the 24-volt pin, you'll see that wire there. That actually goes to the switch box. The reason that it's on the 24-volt pin or, or uh, stud on the batteries is because if you hooked it up at the 12-volt um, voltage, if your batteries got low, your hydraulic system might not even activate. So it's kind of a safety feature. Um, to prevent low voltage issues, and it's also to prevent burning up the switches with too high of a voltage. Uh, your switches activate, typically this is the smart thing to do. So you're going to have three solenoids per pump uh, because these do fail, because they're actually only 12 volt solenoids. So over time what happens is they're, they're arcing inside because they're, they're moving and things end up, you'll end up with a shorted um, Solenoid, so these need to be tested from time to time. So just something to look at. Um, you just take a meter, go across it, and uh, you know if it uh, reads shorted, then you just replace it. But you should always check your your solenoid so you don't get what's called a runaway pump. Uh, 
uh, and that's a condition where, you know, eventually, let's say two of the solenoids are failed, you don't know about it, and then one just goes on its own, and you're driving, you're going to end up with a runaway pump. Now, that brings us to the next fail-safe that you need to have in the car. So, this is actually right next to the seat. And what this is, is this is the ground cable. And this stud actually goes through the body, goes into the frame, and it grounds it. So, if your hydraulics are hooked up at that point, let's say you have a runaway pump, you just pull this, and then at that point, you know, the pump's not going to run away anymore, so you can fix it. Uh, but something very important to have, it can prevent fires. Uh, it can prevent you from losing control of the car if you get a runaway pump. Uh, so I definitely recommend that. All right, so we're under the hood, and we're going to explain how the hydraulic cylinders actually mount. in the, this pretty much goes for any uh, rear-wheel drive car from the, you know, pretty much 60s on. Um, so anyways, over here, and forgive me, the, you know, everything's very dirty. So this is your hydraulic cylinder, and what happens is you take the original hole for the shock, and you're going to open that up, um, and the shocks are no longer get, going to be installed. The cylinder comes up through, uh, and then you put the aftermarket coils in. Uh, one thing that you do have to do is, uh, you can see this notch cut in the, um, upper control arm, that makes room for the cylinder when the camber changes or the angle of the um, the control arm. So that's pretty much how the front's set up. It's pretty straightforward uh, on these cars. And this is how the rear is set up. So there's just a hole basically cut through the spring perch. Uh, cylinder comes up through. Uh, there's one on each side. And then at that point, there'd be a donut, which is basically a big washer that keeps it from coming through. And then you have your choice as far as how you're going to set up the rear. I highly recommend setting up some sort of power ball at the bottom of the cylinder and doing a what's called coil over setup. So there's actually a coil um, trap there instead of doing the traditional way or the way that you do the front of the car where the, uh, the cup is actually on top of the spring. Uh, this is a lot safer. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, always make sure that you put Loctite on the collar for the cylinder because that's actually what's holding everything in place. And one time I had one loosen up on me and when I went to go lift the car up, it actually went out the back window. So I'd definitely be very, very careful of that. And uh, just a little bonus, uh, this is actually um, my car when it was in Lowrider Magazine. I have it framed and... Um, you know, I'm definitely going to return the car to its former glory. Um, so stay tuned and uh, we'll update you guys on that. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. Uh, be sure to like uh, or comment and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Car Guys New England. Take care.